times money in the bank. This event went into overtime, much like this year's Wrestlemania. I gotta say, these pay-per-views are being overflowed with so much filler that we may end up having 4-hour pay-per-views every month and 5-hour Wrestlemanias every year. Ah, oh, the pain hurts so much. Money. Money, 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 okay, money. For God's sake, this is the second Money in the Bank Sin video in a row where I place a sin for the theme song for this event, which continues to remain the same. Boring. As we welcome you to the greatest Money in the Bank pay-per-view in history. Welcome to the greatest edition of this event in history, cliche. I still have a problem with those giant ladders never being used during these events. My name is Enzo Amore! As much as I love these catchphrases, I come to think that in about one year, even Enzo will be asking why he's saying the same thing many times a week. I wonder if he accidentally started saying them when he was literally asked how he was doing. Lillian Garcia hasn't referred to these guys as the club yet. Ain't that their name? Check out my Chewbacca impression. Skip. Wait a minute. This is a fatal four-way tag team match, and so there are four teams. So why isn't there a member of each team in the ring at one time? Why do two other teams have to stay on the apron? And why have I seen many previous matches with a member of each team in the ring at one time? Does the WWE ever make up their mind on whether or not this should actually be a fatal four-way match? Bottom line is, this two superstars in the ring while two other teams stay outside rule is bullshit and stupid. Enzo sneak up on anybody? Well, Enzo's the legal man. He made the tag. Why would Enzo be surprised that Kofi tried to pin him? Did he forget that this is a fatal four-way tag match? Oh, no, and no one seems to like the Bart Villains. Not even Vince, from what I heard. Now, this would have made the match more entertaining than it already is, with all members in the ring at one time and a big free-for-all. If there are no disqualifications, why does anyone have to stay outside the ring then? But Anderson, though, is gonna tell me did it. Kofi and Carl both tagged in an opponent, throwing away their opportunity to win the titles. For the, titles! the crowd's counting one number ahead of the referee. The referee starts counting, and the fans automatically say two, then say three. Then they embarrass themselves because they believe Enzo and Cass won, despite the obvious two count. The crowd has seen Big E spear other wrestlers through the ropes for months, and only now do they chant holy shit. I guarantee they chant that even if someone gets hit in the back with a chair. Gallows, he just kicked the head off Xavier Woods right in front of our announce table. Off screen, might I add. Kingston! New Day! I give praise to these four teams for putting on the hell of a tag team match by taking two sins off. You didn't win the one that took place in Apple, no. I wonder, did a Money in the Bank ladder match ever take place in Apple? Was it inside a Mac store? Or was Chris on drugs that night? Let me ask Roman Reigns. Stupid idiots. PG catchphrases. After we have had Baron and Dolph compete against each other the last two pay-per-views during the pre-show, only now does WWE realize that they should put this match on the main card. Guess third time's the charm. Last talk. The crowd chanting boring. That's not the sin. The sin is they are right. Because of Baron's slow paced movements during this match, it's going absolutely nowhere. Tweets. Cover! Oh. Dolph's shoulder was up the whole time, so that was not even a one count. And Corbin stunned, guys. And Will you please stop making me say copyright infringement? Oh, oh, it's it's oh, it's ah, you tripped. Okay, this is the only time I'll ever say this just so you don't get pissed at me for repeating more sins. After seeing someone deliver a finisher, the moment gets ruined with JBL saying BALL GAME because he says that at pretty much every event ever. Alright, there's a little improvement. Charlotte tossed away Ric Flair's robe and donned one of her own for once. Only two things remain. Well, I'll let the figure four leg lock slide, but get rid of the Ric Flair remix music and stop saying woo and you got yourself your own gimmick. Also, since Dana is only a protege, she gets half a robe only. Previously on WWE. Who gives a shit about Hulu? Relax, relax. Dana tells Charlotte to relax even though Charlotte isn't freaking out. Hey look, we got muscles. Okay, I'll admit it. I did not see Natalia's heel turn coming, but honestly, I've seen her turn heel many times already. How about turning Becky heel? Would be more of a shocker. There is no fear, and there is no hesitation. And there is no death, there is the force. Sheamus somehow hasn't joined the Wyatt family yet. By looking at his beard, he certainly is qualified. Previously on WWE again. He loves to fight. We're gonna find out if Apollo Crews does. 
Apollo was in the ring, right? He made it to WWE. I'm pretty sure that answers your question on whether or not Apollo loves to fight. This camera is somewhat brighter than the others. 14,150 WWE fans. There goes Michael, once again telling us the number of fans in attendance, even though he said that like twice already. You gotta like the moxie of this kid. Damn, absolutely beautiful. See what you get for arguing with the referee? It is presented by Gold Bond's new men's essentials body powder. Skip, where the fuck did that come from? It is a electric in Vegas. I don't care what anybody says. I am removing a sin automatically for this match existing. The doctor said he'd be out for nine months. John, John, I can hear you. Stop talking so loudly during matches. Files waiting for him now. Quick take down to John Cena. AJ's random lap around the ring. What the hell was that about? John Cena being one of the guys he looks forward to meeting. You have to wonder if it's one of the most hyped up dream matches we've ever had as so much slow movements in the first 10 minutes. Slow movements in the first two to three minutes? Sure. But with slow movements going on for 10 minutes, it's a no wonder why this match was nearly 30 minutes long. And I think I just figured out why this event went into overtime too. What the fuck was that? I'm restart that momentum swing again. And again, AJ Styles! That counter was amazing. John waits nearly 20 seconds before putting his hand in the air for the five knuckle shuffle. It's a no wonder that AJ would counter. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh! AJ somehow didn't break his hip from that landing. That was a nasty fall. It seems that all he got from it was a bruise or something, which is highly unlikely from a fall like that. And Cena launches style. Oh! What the hell happened there? No, 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 no. That attitude adjustment counter into the calf crusher was so impressive that I gotta remove two sins. Try to, try to do what he can to block Cena. Actually, AJ's doing whatever he can to make sure John makes it to the ropes. That was the most fucked up five knuckle shuffle I have ever seen. Styles clash! I know! Is anyone ever gonna stay down when hit by finishers? Apparently, a referee can get knocked out just by a brief tap to the face. Seems legit. Well, that was bullshit. Not saying AJ defeating John is bullshit. Well, then again, he didn't. This was a great match, and it all got ruined by that goddamn club. I always say outside interference is a sin, but the way the match ended was stupid in so many ways. So, no, AJ Styles never defeated John Cena. The club defeated John Cena. See how stupid that sounds? Well, it's true, and here's your punishment for ruining a dream match. What a BS way to finish this thing! Now that I think about it, JBL should honestly join me in CinemaSense 2 expansion. Introduce the first ladder into the match tonight. I think Cesaro realized that Chris was going to pull the first ladder introduced as too small to reach the prize cliche and prevented it from happening. Thanks for that. And now Del Rio! I just kicked your ass. And what is Owens gonna do oh, here? No, 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 no. Kevin probably realized that his weight would prevent him from doing anything epic from this point. I bet he just loves being in a match like this. What a devastating soft slam. Oh, Larry and Jeff Hardy, I feel like I was a thousand feet. Hey, Jeff Hardy got a mention. Yay! 69! 69! I am starting to get some creepy vibes here. Okay, after the third time Cesaro delivered uppercuts to his opponents, how do they not know that he's going to do it again? Dean, Alberto, and Chris coincidentally sit down in the corners when Kevin takes control. The position Sami Zayn is copyright infringement. Forget about Sami Zayn, Chris! Grab the briefcase! You can't forget about them when they are punching you and trying to get you off the ladder. Time to swing! I would have laughed and removed five sins if Alberto's head accidentally hit the ladder while in the swing. Bullfrog splash. Michael just called Kevin fat. Oh my lord. Oh, I don't care who gives me hate, but there's no way Kevin could have survived that without injury. Sammy Zane with a briefcase in sight. You know, I think Sammy would have a better chance at getting the briefcase if he actually waited until he was able to grab the hook instead of trying to reach it when he was unable to. Oh, oh no. Oh. Man, did you see how Del Rio hit? Who cares how Alberto hit? Did you see Cesaro's landing? That was even more brutal. Sammy was about to fall off the ladder after getting the power bomb, but Kevin prevented that, only to toss him off a little later. 
I'll give Dean his moment. He earned it. Any place want to be cast in the night? Foreshadowing. Skip the damn pre-show panel. Today they're gonna celebrate with juice boxes and cookies. That sounds fun. No, it doesn't. Chip tonight. So we've oh. gotta get Titus obviously missed the stairs. See, Rusev held that United States Championship for almost a year when he first held it. Rusev held the U.S. title for only four and a half months the first time. That's nowhere near almost a year. You see your father over there? He's a loser. Storyline or not, you don't talk shit to someone's kids. The fans are booing Roman before his music even hit. Or are they booing Seth? Hard to tell. The first 30 seconds of this match is Seth and Roman moving in a circle. You can't wrestle, Chance. Yeah, it's a different Roman Reigns. Nope, I see the same one. The different Roman Reigns is not revealed until two days later. And then he would go into one of the most dramatic... Roman's creepy tongue motions. <laughs> Copyright infringement. <laughs> More conversations during matches. Well, Seth realizes he's got to pin the champ or tap him. Ha! <laughs> Giggity! And one thing, and Reigns again. Seth obviously sat down on his own power, yet he acts like he hurt his nuts. Copyright infringement. Oh, Roman fell too early. Superman punch! Tyson -like. Comparing Roman Reigns to Mike Tyson. Viva la Raza! Yeah, no. Also, Seth moved away from Roman before pinning him, and that was after he supposedly bounced off of Roman. Look, it's working! Seth randomly takes his belt off. It does nothing of importance to this match. For a pedigree! Oh, and he's driven right into the official! The referee decides to waste time talking to the doctor. No wonder he got hit. Also, referee gets knocked down at crucial point in match cliche. And he's looking for another one! A spear by counter! Damn, gotta remove a send for that awesome counter. It's... Uh -oh, no, no, no. You know, this cash-in would have been more exciting if Dean didn't hint that it would happen a week prior to it. Just saying. I watched it and said, well, wish I didn't see that coming. Attacking from behind. While I admit that I never like money in the bank cash-ins, I will still applaud Dean for finally making it to the top of the mountain. 